I'll tell you what, the whole reason they do architecture is to manage complexity and change. I mean, you, you know, for 7,000 years, humanity has not been able to deal with complexity and change with any other approach other than architecture. If something gets so complex, you can't see it in its entirety at the, at the level of definition you're required to create it. You're going to have to describe it. Architecture. Okay, so if you don't want to deal with something complex, you're going to talk about architecture. If somebody hadn't figured out how to describe buildings, for example, we'd be having this meeting in a log cabin. Okay. If somebody had figured out how to describe airplanes, I'd have rolled in here last night in a covered wagon. If somebody had figured out how to describe automobiles, some of you guys have showed up this morning on a horse. And if somebody had figured out how to describe computers, you'd be adding up columns of numbers with pencils and paper. It'd be worse, you'd be moving little donuts around on wires, you know, basically. If you, if you can't describe it, you can't create it. I don't care what it is. And if it's, in, in, in any case, if you want to deal with something complex, I mean, if you're trying to build a log cabin, you don't need architecture. You know, but you need an axe and a forest. Cut down trees, you don't build log cabins. If you're trying to build a 100-story building or build, even a building like this, you know, forget the axe and the forest. You're going you to have to describe it for, before you can create it. Okay, so... If you're going to deal with something complex, you have to be able to describe it, basically, architecture. Now, if you ever want to change it, you're, you, you go to the architect. The architecture is the baseline for changing anything. Leon got into that a little bit. He didn't develop it a, a, lot, a lot about it. But if anybody wanted to change this building, you want to change the building, what do you do? You have to call up the engineering department and say, hey, uh, tomorrow morning i got 5,000 people are going to show up. We're going to have banquet style seating, round tables, and we've got to change the building. Okay, they, uh, you know, the, you know it's not, you're not going to put 5,000 people in bank with self-seating in this room, for example. Yeah, it's going to have to change. <laughs> so, so send out the architecture so we can figure out what to do. So what happens at the end? The engineering department says, send up the what? Architecture? You mean building, building architecture? You mean building wide architecture, the whole thing? You can't do it. You can't do it. It would, it would take so long to cost you. mean the whole building at excruciating level of detail down the level of definition where you define where all the electrical light switches are, the light bulb, and the plumbing, and the fire. And the, and the, well, you can't do it. You cannot do it. It would take so long, it would cost so much to describe the building at that level of definition, the whole building. Building wide architect can't do it. And on top of that, even if we had done that, spent the money and taken the time, you guys keep changing the building. We can't keep the architecture up to date anyway. So, you know, we, 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 it wouldn't represent the existing state of the building as it exists. So even if we had it, it wouldn't be any good for doing what you want to do with it anyway. So basically, we don't have any architecture. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now what do you do? Well, you only got three possibilities. You can get a bunch of guys with axes and sledgehammers. That was what Leah, Leah said. Get a bunch of guys with axes and sledgehammers. Starts knocking out these walls. Not with me in this room. You know, you're basically classifying the descriptive representations of an object. And how I learned this, I was looking at the descriptive representations of airplanes, the descriptive representations of buildings, the descriptive representations of automobiles, the descriptive representations of computers. I was looking at actual instances of descriptive representations of complex objects, okay? And, and I had them all laying on my desk one day, and one day it dawned me. I could see the pattern. Okay, and Leah gave you some, some thoughts about the pattern. This is just, these are all bills of material. These are all the bills of material. These are all the functional specs. These are all the drawings of the geometry. This is all the operating instructions. Uh, these are all the timing diagrams. And, and, and these are all the design objectives, okay? <laughs> You're basically describing a, a, an object, whatever that object is. I, I just used the, the names of physical objects for you. Bills of material, functional specs, the geometry, the, the operating instructions, the timing diagrams, the design objectives. If you look at the descriptive representation of a building, that's what you're going to find. You're going to be bills of material. You're not going to build a building without a bills of material. There are going to be functional specs. You're not going to build a building without functional specs. Got, there, there are going to be geometry. You're not going to build a building without some geometry. <laughs> Those are basically the descriptive representation of any object. Pick one, any one you want to. You know, in effect, and, on, and Leon also pointed this out. This is really pretty simple because these are describing what the thing is made out of. This is how the thing works, where the components are, who is responsible for doing what, when do things happen, and why do they happen. I mean, go back linguistically to the origins of language. You, you got, if you want a, compl a, a complete description of something, you have to answer six questions. What, how, where, who, why, why? 
Okay, and, and you, you, if you don't answer all six questions, that doesn't mean you shouldn't or you couldn't. It just means you're, you, di you didn't make everything explicit. You're making assumptions. Any, any question you don't answer, you're making assumptions about it. And the next question becomes, well, how, is that good or bad? Well, it's neither good or bad. It all depends on how good your assumptions are. It's good to say a lot of time, but it's bad if, in fact, you're making a lot of assumptions. And in manufacturing, the erroneous assumptions are called defects. And in fact, Capers Jones has lots of material on, on the defects. And, and I thought and I was showing you some, some of those things there. But this is really simple. And by the way, let me, let me go back to this for a moment. In the bill of materials, here, I got so many things on here. In the bill of materials, you find parts and part structures. You find no expression of functionality, no expression of geometry or location. You find no expression of operating responsibility. You find no expression of time, and you find no expression of motivation. You have parts and parts structures. That's it. In the functional specs, you find the functional specs. You find no expression of parts and parts structure. You find no expression of geometry. You find no expression of operating responsibility. You find no expression of time, no expression of motivation. You find functional specs. In the geometry, you find no expression. Now, I'm not going to do any more of these, but you get the idea. There's only one and only one thing in the picture. If you're trying to do engineering, you only want one thing in the picture. Here's the problem. If you're doing manufacturing, you'd like to have everything in the picture. In fact, if you don't have a, a representation of everything, you probably have an incomplete picture. Okay, so you know, for manufacturing purposes, you want composite, you know, but multivariable models. For, for engineering purposes, you want, you know, what I call primitive. You have single variable models. The engineering is done with single variables. There are two problems with redundancy. And as soon as you have something in there that's already in there, you're spending money that doesn't have to be spent. Anytime you put something in there another time, you're wasting money. And the second reason you don't want to think in there is, is that it's issue of entropy. If the same concept exists more than once, but is not defined consistently, or if the inventory record value to the degree you have, Disorder, discontinuity. Okay, and Leon had a few examples of that. I was doing some work at a at a uh, an insurance company, one of the big ones up in the northeast in the U.S. And they were they had some big, beautiful wall charts, you know, multicolored wall charts for uh, printed on plotters for management presentations, obviously. And one of those wall charts had two concentric circles. In the middle concentric circle were 35 systems tied in green. Those are the major applications that were built by IT to, to support that, that, that company. Around the periphery of that, of the, of the, of the, set, the, the green cir the circle of green, green systems were 200 systems colored in blue. Uh, those were the Excel spreadsheets run on PCs managed by MBA trying to reconcile the discontinuity of the data created by the 35 systems colored in green that were built by IT. Okay. Now, management, in their wisdom, had said, you know, we're never going to rebuild a legacy because we spent so much money and spent so much time and got you know, so much money invested. We're never going to build a legacy system, rebuild the legacy systems. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Uh, however, how much money are you spending trying to keep those things running, basically? Those Excel spreadsheets are expensive, and those PCs are expensive, and the NBAs are expensive. You got enough of them, you're talking about a lot of money here. The next question turns out to be, did, were those 200 MBAs running Excel spreadsheets on PCs, were they the only MBAs running Excel spreadsheets on PCs in that company? No, those were the ones that were in IT. You know, those are the ones that they knew about. See, all the ones that they don't know about are probably four or five times that many the rest of the enterprise. Well, I'd forget them for, them for a moment. Just assume 200. Did those 200 systems fix the problem? No, they created 200 more problems. Now you're going to have 800 systems called in purple managed by PhDs running Excel spreadsheets on Apple machines trying to reconcile to this kind of the data. This is the NBA running 50 on PCs like a 35 systems going in green to level ID. Hey, they're better off. Well, fix the fundamental problem. How much money are they spending?